All right, welcome back to another video. Today I have some new chain rings that I've been sent out from um, Wide Open. They are the absolute black oval chain rings, so we're gonna have a look at them today. Alrighty, so this is what we've got from Absolute Black, the premium oval chain ring. These are made, made for this FSA um, power meter, so obviously the four bolt system here. So we're going to take these FSA ones off and then the oval will just go right there. Okay, so these are the chain rings here, and Absolute Black and Wide Open have been kind enough to give the entire Copeland's team them. So we've all got them for our um, road bikes at the moment. I think we're gonna get them on our TVT bikes eventually. This is the chain ring here, so basically it's just gonna go on like that. Basically that is what the chain ring is gonna look like when it's on my power meter. It's gonna look absolutely killer. And just as easy as that, that is the big chain ring taken off. Alright, so I've actually had to take off the non-drive side part of the crank just so I can get the small chain ring off here. Alright, we've got the full crank off, so now we can actually get the small chain ring off as well. Alright, so this is a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. So this is the 53 tooth off my original um, power meter. So this is an FSA 53 tooth regular. And this is the new absolute black oval chain ring. This is also 53 teeth, but this is obviously the oval. So it kind of looks like it changes shape as it goes around. Yo. What's up? Yo, do you put, did you put yours that way? Or did you put it like that way? If you look on the chain ring, there'll be a little indent between the two bolts and you put that behind the crank. Oh yeah, I see. So, yeah, that's what you have to do. Oh yeah, easy. That's basically what I do every time I have a mechanic problem. I just call Maddie because he knows a lot more about bikes than I do. All right, and there we have it. We've got the absolute black chain rings installed on my FSA power bot. So now we'll just chuck this back on the Cannondale and then we'll see how it spins. Right, and there we have it. The absolute black um, oval chain rings have now been installed on my Cannondale. Alright, so I've just taken the chain rings around for just a little lap around the block just to see how they are. It all seems to be running quite well and quite smoothly. Uh, it looks real weird. Like the chain rings look like real funny. I think I'm just not used to it when they're all around in their egg shape. I'm just not used to it. But yeah, they feel really, really good so far. Um, haven't done a bit of sprinting on them, but I've got a club race tonight. We've got the Tuesday night club race and it's a sprint finish usually on this one. So we'll be able to test them out. So hopefully I put them on right. Still probably got a little bit of adjusting to do on the front derailleur just to get it so it's working perfectly. But other than that, pretty much ready to go. All right, just gave the bike a little bit of a clean before I went to the race. I just want it to be nice and clean now that I've got these new chain rings on. Just to see what it looks like. <clears throat> so I'm also going to be running the C50s tonight. It's obviously a flat course and I probably should run the C75s, but these are what I'm using on the weekend at Elite Nationals. So I just want to give them, give them a bit of a run and get used to them. See that, kids? Now that is how clean your chain should be after you give it a fresh clean. All right, so welcome back to another Masterton Club race. Tonight we have a handicap road race. So this is the first group going off. They we had nine minutes on us. This group, I think, had three minutes on us. And here's me just doing a little bit of a warm up. I like to keep the legs rolling before we start. So me and Langers are the two riders from Copeland's in this group. So it's just us. And I think at the start there was six of us to start with. So as you start, this is the first long section of the course. It's quite a long um, drag, slightly downhill as well. So I think we're cracking over 50 kilometers an hour down here. So we're rolling really, really fast. So the first group is obviously three minutes ahead of us. So we're probably not gonna see them for a while, but we just keep cracking on. I think it's like 400 watts on the front and it's pretty easy in the wheels to be honest. And then the cornering is the bit that I wanna take a part of this video. So I do most of the corners on this first lap at the front and you'll see that um, so Langus pulls a big turn down this main road. So you turn left onto this main road and then there's a left turn and then a right turn pretty straight after it. And um, 
So here's the first left turn here, and I just completely whacked them around this corner. And look, there's what, three, four, five bike lengths there, and then obviously it's a handicap road race, so I don't want to completely bugger off and attack them because there's no point doing that. We just want to try and get to the front of the race and then worry about winning it. So then here's the next right-hander, and I just do the same thing, normal cornering technique, and that's probably what, five, six, seven, eight bike lengths right there. I'm almost gone there. I think I attacked them at this point. I didn't like mean to attack them, but I was completely gone, so I just keep riding at probably like oh, 300 watts until they came back to me. So they've come back to me now, so I just sit on the back and have a bit of a rest before I start rolling again. So then after this straight here, I think it's about a, a K, maybe a kilometer and a half, you turn left onto the next long straight, which this is the hard bit of the course. This is like a false flat for probably two, three K. And it's um, really where we're gonna make our time up. So I thought we're like, we'll push it along here because the, obviously the weaker groups aren't gonna be able to push three, 400, 500 watts up here. So let's really get into it. But they let me get a gap. So I just sat up again and then waited for the group to come catch me. So we're coming into the top section of the course now and um, this is up the, right at the end of this false flat section. So this is where the legs really start to sting. So I think Langers is gonna come and pull a pretty decent turn up here. And then here's the left hander and then there's like this weird like um, v-shaped chicane so there we go through there, there's a little bit of gravel on the corner so you have to take it quite wide and you kind of rip it through here and you're doing probably 47k an hour but here langers puts it in the gutter so all these guys out here because they're not coming close to my wheel are just getting absolutely no draft and that would have really been um, taking a toll on their legs there and then just another corner where the, the bike lengths are just getting worse and worse. Look, this is a really bad one. So that's probably like 10 bike lengths there that they've let go around that corner. But it's just extra work that the boys don't have to be doing if they just do those corners nicely and they stick onto my wheel. And this means that they've got more energy to pull back to the bunch and then maybe even make it to the, um, the next lap. So that's us coming through after the first lap. So that was me on the front. So we're on to the second lap, and this is actually the fastest lap out of all three. I looked at it on Strava last night, and we did this segment. So the whole lap is a segment, and we did this probably 10 seconds faster than we did the first lap, and we did the second lap. So we really, because um, we could start to see the group in front of us, so we really started to push it. So the important thing on this lap was obviously just to keep rolling and just keep the tempo high. So we take, instead of taking those really short turns where you kind of just roll over each other and go straight to the back, we decided to start doing the ones where we just did really big turns on the front and then pulled to the back when you were tired and then had a rest and then hopefully they would pull a big turn on the front as well. So I think me and Langers were probably doing, I guess, minute long turns on this lap. So there's obviously riders starting to um, pop off now and this is the end of the second lap up the v chicane. That's the first rider we saw the entire race. So we know that we're slowly starting to wheel them in at the moment. So they were coming out the next corner. This is like coming into the home straight here. So this is basically one lap to go from where you'd start thinking about doing a bit of a sprint. So you come around this cone and then this is basically the sprint finish. And it's really deceiving around this corner because you can see the finish. And I've done it plenty of times in the past where you just absolutely um, go hell bent at the bottom. And there's no way you can sprint that long to the end. It's actually quite a long sprint. But anyway, that was the um, group ahead of us. And we literally, they're coming onto the last lap, the bell lap and we can see them in our sights. And this is where I um, get a little bit of rushed blood to the head, because Langers kind of just lets me go here. So he just kind of lets me go. He's definitely not working that hard. So then I get a rush of blood to the head and just absolutely sprint full gas to get into this um, group. So what I'm doing here is I jump into the group instead of going straight around it. So I kind of just get a little bit of breath together, get out of the wind for a little bit. And then when I come through the top, I just attack it out the top, see if I can get away. I did this as like a bit of an out of sight, out of mind thing, but it didn't really work too well. I think I was away for about a minute until Langers completely drilled it past me. And I wasn't very happy about this, so I was like, oh no, buggy you, I'll just sit in the back of the um, the back of this peloton and just kind of wait to the end and just sprint. But then that didn't really work out, so here it is here, this is the most pinnacle part of the race. Langers and Butler just um, attack there, and I didn't see it for about 30 seconds, so they're probably like... 400 meters up the road and I have to do I think I did 540 watts for a minute just to try and get back onto them and it finally got back onto them onto the um, long straight up here this, so this is the back the back long straight the um, false flat and then I finally get back onto them I feel alright so I start pulling a few turns because there's still another group in front of us and we are here we finally come up to them so this is what happened in this group here so Langers, this rider comes out 
right into the middle. Obviously, he wants to get to the end of the race with us, but you don't pull out into a group that's going probably double the speed of you. It was actually quite dangerous and pushed us over into the center line. But anyway, we're coming into the sprint finish here, and Langers rolls up to me here, and he just taps me on the shoulder, and um, this Simon Butler guy who's been riding with us is doing a really good ride. So here he is here. Like, he's never been able to last this long with us, and he was riding strong all day on the flat. And he just thought he was gonna be happy to ride with us. But Langers came up to me and he said, nah, we wanna let him have a win. Like, to me and Langers, winning an A-grade race means absolutely nothing to us. So what Langers said was that I'll lead out the um, the back straight and then you lead out right to the sprint finish, but let Butler have it. So I'm, I'm sitting here just waiting for him to come past. I'm like, oh my God, I don't wanna win the sprint. I'm doing like 700 watts. So I was like, oh, I should probably kinda of just stop pedaling. But yeah, we let Butler have the win, and it means so much more to a guy like this than to me and um, Langers. So there's Langers, giving them a bit of a clap. It was really cool to let someone win. I think this probably his first like outright win. So it was really cool to be able to do that with um, Langers. So I think it was a really good idea. Hey! Let's go! Once again, I'm Alright, so my first ever time on those absolute black oval chain rings and they did really well in that club race. So my initial thoughts when I went out the door is that when I first started pedaling up the road it felt really, really weird. Like, it actually, you could definitely notice that they weren't round and that you could kind of feel like you almost felt like it was going like over and over and over and you're kind of like over pedaling almost but i went and did like a 25 minute warm-up before the club race and i think it literally took me only about 10 minutes until i didn't even notice that i had them on but yeah that club race was three laps of about 11k a lap it was like well false flat and then a false downhill as well it was basically just completely flat so we did i think we averaged like 285 watts so it wasn't like like ridiculously hard race but it wasn't easy as well and there were quite a few corners every um lap so i was really trying to push it out of the corners like did some like seated efforts and then did some like full gas out of the saddle efforts as well out of the corners and they're really stiff like i've had some problems with those fsa um chain rings just always dropping and kind of feeling a bit flimsy and stuff these so far after one ride feel really stiff i haven't given it a full watt sprint i think i did 1100 watts today so nothing um crazy to really test them but they feel really stiff at that 1100 watts so i'll be interested to see what they do at some higher wattages aside from how they um did today in the race i think it makes this bike look absolutely awesome with having those blacked out rings so on most chain rings all the teeth around the um big chain ring are always kind of silver even if the in inner bit's black but these are all black at the moment and I think it looks absolutely awesome. So a massive shout out to Absolute Black for their chain rings and to Wide Open for hooking up me and not only me but my entire team with these chain rings. Everyone in Copeland's is going to be riding them for this season and for next season. I'm going to drop the Instagram links to Wide Open and to Absolute Black at the bottom in the description. So if you want to go give them a follow that would be awesome. Just as a little thank you for helping them hook us all up with these. Also it was 30 degrees today and it's been 30 degrees for quite a few rides uh, in the weekend. So if you want to have a little bit of a tan line update, yeah, they're getting pretty bad here in New Zealand. Alrighty, that is going to be the end of today's video. We are so close to 6,000 subscribers, so if you have not subscribed, please hit that red button down below. I'm heading up to Nationals, um, and in a few days, we've got the TT Friday women's races on Saturday, and then the men's races on Sunday, so we're going to be heading up to Cambridge for that.